Today I'm gonna do a long hike with uh, the new Mitacon 200mm f4 macro lens and uh, yeah I figured it has been too long since I did a proper photo walk I've just been in the studio all the time and I really miss going on a long walk with a lens trying to snap some good photos and today I am in uh, Tyresta uh, National Park which is one of the nicest and biggest national parks in the Stockholm area just gonna take a long walk, a few hours, shoot whatever I can find. Maybe there will be some macro, maybe even some wildlife. I think a lens like this, a really long 200mm macro lens, is perfect uh, for a walk like this. So yeah, let's see what we can get. <laughs> Starting to think that it was kind of a bad idea to walk around here with rubber boots so slippery everywhere just ice and snow <laughs> so the reason i wanted to do a review of this lens was that it is a 200 millimeter one-to-one -one magnification macro lens uh, which i think is the first of its kind in the world the longest macro lens uh, i've seen before this is 180 millimeter so it's kind of a record it doesn't have autofocus, but I don't find that to be a deal breaker. It can still be a very interesting lens. And the benefit, of course, with 200 millimeters is that you get a very long working distance. So that can be great if you're trying to capture skittish insects like butterflies and similar. This is a pretty interesting structure when you look very closely at it. The first thing you will notice when you start using this lens is it's very heavy. It's uh, I think 1.3 kilos, so it's uh, definitely a heavy chunk of metal. Uh, and also it's very long. It's longer than any other macro lens I've tried, I think. Uh, but of course it needs to be this long because it's 200 millimeters in focal length and one-to-one -one magnification. So yeah, it's probably not possible to make a lens with these specifications that is shorter than this but yeah you will definitely feel the weight of it when you walk around with it what i love about Tyresta national park is that this nature as it looked before mankind completely untouched nature that has looked the same way since the ice age and uh, it's beautiful although i mean it's messy but that's the beauty of it you don't see this kind of nature very often at least not when you live in the city like i do so i love coming here it's very calm quiet and it's a big area of untouched nature Let's try to shoot this at a few different apertures to see how the lens will handle chromatic aberrations. Will we have any or not? Let's see. First a couple of shots at f4 and then a couple of shots at f8. Last three were at f8. 
So I see some tendencies to chromatic aberration, um, but uh, we'll look at that closer uh, in the end of the video in the studio. Also, I get a feeling that this lens is not that sharp. You have a little bit of that haze uh, that you so often see in unsharp lenses at wide apertures. So um, yeah, I will not judge that yet. I will wait until I come home at the end of this video and we'll look at that closely together. But I get a feeling that this lens is not tack sharp. And I'm really not that surprised since this is a Mitticon lens and as you might know the worst macro lens I've ever reviewed on this channel was a Mitticon. Um, but I figured everyone is worth a second chance, right? So I asked what the price was going to be and they said around 650 to 700 US dollars. And I was surprised because that's expensive. Even if this lens would be perfect, like really, really good, that's expensive because for around $350 you can get a used Sigma or Canon 180mm, which has image stabilization, which has autofocus and which has perfect image quality. Um, so those are some good options or alternatives to look at. Slightly shorter working distance, but uh, not a big difference. Of course, these lenses from Canon and Sigma are for DSLRs. They are older lenses, so you will have to get an adapter to use them on a modern mirrorless camera, but could be very much worth it. I'm recording this review on March 3rd and I have no idea when they're gonna release the lens so you might be viewing this in April or June but uh, this is the reason it looks cold out here <laughs> which it is it's close to zero degrees today and quite windy and not that many insects unfortunately When it comes to build quality, it feels sturdy, very heavy and metally, like everything is made of metal. And um, unfortunately the focusing ring like doesn't feel that smooth. It's not the smoothest focusing ring I've tried, even though it works. And it has a really long throw, which is of course great. As you can see here, this seems to be the video version of the lens. You have these cogs here for aperture, or actually I'm not sure. like. These seem too small to actually work and the lens is probably not weather sealed so I hope it will survive this little outing now that it is raining. Uh, but yeah, overall the build quality was okay. Uh, it's just a focusing ring, it doesn't feel like 100%. Uh, the aperture wheel has like soft, very nice clicks and, and feels smooth. Have some moss here. Usually it doesn't come out that great in macro photos, but let's play around and see what we get. Look at this, they even have a bathroom here out in the middle of nowhere. How convenient.
just pass by this little quiet lake. Some birds here. Got a few shots of the swans at F4. Happy I also found a little bit of wildlife on this walk, not only like boring dead things. And the shots I took of the swans back here, that really shows the versatility of a long macro lens. Great for wildlife and also great for macro photography. So we're back in the studio. Uh, I didn't mention it in the video so far, but there is a metal lens hood that you get with the lens that you can use if you want to. Um, in general, I don't like lens hoods that much and also I wanted to see how the lens performs without a lens hood. So that's why I did not use it in the video. Uh, but unfortunately, the issues with low sharpness and low contrast have been even more apparent when I did some tests now in the studio. Look at these shots. Uh, to have something to compare with, I tried taking the exact same shot with exact same lighting and everything, same settings, uh, with both the Laowa 85mm, which is a really good macro lens, and with the Mitacon 200. And as you can see, at f4 and f5.6 with the Laowa, uh, the contrast and the sharpness is really, really horrible with the Mitacon lens. And at f8, the sharpness and contrast is better on the Mitacon, but still not good. So if you're trying to take sharp, nice, contrasty macro photos, this is not the lens for you. But the lens has a couple of strengths. Uh, there is no chromatic aberration whatsoever, so uh, I have to give that to Mitacon. Nice job on that. And uh, the lens has a very long working distance. The working distance uh, is of course correlated to the focal length and I measured it to 25 centimeters at one time magnification. That, uh, that is Really impressive, I have to say. But for the price that they have suggested for this lens, $650, you could easily buy a Canon or Sigma 180mm macro lens. And then you will get image stabilization, perfect sharpness, like really good sharpness, and autofocus. And even if you have to buy an adapter to make that lens fit on your camera, I think it is definitely a better purchase. Uh, so, unfortunately, I cannot recommend this Mitacon lens. Even if this lens were to be priced at like $300, I would still recommend you to not buy it because you will be disappointed with the image quality. Thank you for watching this video and see you soon again! Don't forget to subscribe if you like macro photography.